everything is late. This, this season is late. It is like end of May and I haven't even like made beds or anything. Um, it's not just like this for me. My neighbor's freaking out because uh, he hasn't even planted corn yet. Everyone, it's, it's a late year. And the reason why is because we had really good snow cover, um, which gave a lot of water to the land. And also it's been raining a lot. It, like it's hard to get on the land. Um, <laughs> I'm not complaining. I am not complaining, especially after last year. I am not complaining. We need the rain. It's just everything's late, but that's okay. Um, so now it's time to prep the fields. I have been, I have been at it with, uh, with the discs. I've been, I've been disking everything, trying to, uh, maintain the weeds because with a lot of water, all the weed seeds that are in there and the roots, they're sending up uh, new growth, obviously, and uh, everything's going to grow well. So it's going to be a weedy year. So I've been on this, uh, a lot. I've done, uh, some, some grubbing and, and some disking, just turning the soil over, trying to aerate it as well. And that's what I'm doing today. Uh, yesterday it rained, it rained on the weekend and today's the first day where it looks like it's going to dry up. It's windy, it's sunny. And so I need to turn everything over and kind of get ready. And also it's going to rain probably tomorrow night. So I'm going to want to spread some chicken manure. Yay. Um, so what I did was basically uh, once over this morning, uh, the large fields with the discs, um, and the smaller fields and the little empty rows that we have, I'm going to pass with the, I'm going to pass with the rototiller and yeah, I'll show you why. This is field D. Um, for all you long time viewers, uh, you might recall the last episode of season one, <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, the last episode about season of season one, um, I plowed some new land and, and reclaimed some old field. This is one of those fields and I have another one elsewhere. And last year, so what I did was I plow in the fall and then generally the year after in the spring, I'm, I'm really disc it in and rototill it in and then I'll do a cover crop. And uh, this field was my second seeding of oats. Uh, we usually I'll just use oats as a cover crop because I also harvest and sell them. And if I hadn't planted oats in this field, if you were if you were watching season two, uh, you'll know that I would have had no oats, which would have been a tragedy. Um, so this field really saved me. It's a really wet field. It's uh, black soil, black earth and, and clay it holds its water. It's actually a bit of a problem sometimes that it doesn't dry out. Anyway, um, now I need to um, put beds in this field and, uh, and, and start to plant my, my herbs in here. I can't do another cover crop. I need to, like, I barely got enough room, uh, to, to break even. I need to expand. Um, the problem is this field is still an issue. I have quack grass just everywhere. Now I've been disking this in, I've been grubbing it in, uh, for quack grass. What we do is we use the grubber, which is basically just like teeth that go in and scrape the edge and it holds on to all the roots and just collects them out at the end. So I actually remove the roots. It's the only way to get quack grass, but it's not a perfect job. This stuff is everywhere. It's going to be a problem. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass with the rototiller again, uh, try to get more of the quack grass roots up to the soil. So they dry out and die. And I'll pass with the discs again, and then the rototiller, and then eventually we're gonna have to put some, uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to put some crops in here. And it's it's basically that that I'll be doing today. So it is kind of good that we're late because I could get some extra attention on the land, um, frustrate these uh, these quack grass roots as much as I can. But eventually I'm just gonna have to face facts, turn it into beds, and uh, it's gonna be a weedy year. Um, so it's not only here. I also have some space in between. Uh, perennials and also a few beds that eventually I'll go and I'll, I'll do in with the rototiller like oh like the mullein. So mullein is a biennial which means the plants live for two years. The first year it just grows like uh, a plant. We harvest the leaves. The second year it pushes uh, shoots up for uh, flowers and, and then seeds. Um, last year, and I've never seen this before, um, maybe uh, some, some of you have had experience with this, but I've never seen it. Last year, because of the extreme heat and drought, like it was, it was hot and we had no rain, most of my mullein shot seed in the first year, which makes sense. They think they're dying, so it's their only chance to make seed. 
um, and, and they did that. So what I'm left with my second year is just this patchy uh, mullein back here. Um, what you see is green. Those were the ones that didn't uh, push for seed and the rest, well, the rest is just dead. Um, so I'm gonna do a single harvest on this bed uh, and then I'll pass over with the, um, with the rototiller, uh, but I'm gonna give it a little more time to grow. It's still small, but uh, this will eventually get turned into probably another mullein bed. And to my right is where we used to have the skull cap. Um, this is another one of those problems. It's full of quack grass and witch grass, uh, but it's not as bad as the other fields. So I'm gonna pass with the rototiller here, turn this into a bed, and I'll probably put skull cap again on there. Enough yammering on. Um, yeah, let's go do this. Okay, uh, sorry, oh, um, before we get going, um, I always take it for granted that people know what I'm doing when I'm hooking up all these machines. Um, but if you don't and you're interested, um, basically, all of my tractors hook up to, well, both of my tractors hook up to my machines on a three-point system. Well, most of my machines are on a three-point system. Uh, those points are one, two, and three. Um, now, one and two are hooked up to the um, to the hydraulics of the tractor. So this is how I lift and lower my machinery and they use Stabilizing pins. So these pins are if I have a machine that needs to sway on its own like the brushes I take these pins out and it allows the machine to kind of go back and forth But with something like the rototiller, I'm gonna need that to be locked in so I put that pin in here and it locks it in place the third point which is up here is attached just with a pin and it goes right to a, a similar kind of triangle system, three points on the machine. Um, that is not attached to hydraulics. It will just like kind of pivot using a third point, um, which attaches to the machine like so. Now, uh, I think in season one, I have an episode called blown hydraulic line um, where I <laughs> bust a tube on my third point, um, which is hydraulic controlled. So um, in, on that point, it's basically the same concept, except um, there's a piston in it and I'm drawing power right here from the hydraulics of the tractor. So I can extend and shorten that third point. But for the rototiller, I'm not gonna need that. I'm gonna use this one. You just kind of set it once and go. Also, uh, for machines like the rototiller that draws power from the tractor, I'm going to attach to the PTO or power takeoff. I think that's a stupid name. Anyway, um, so this, when I engage, uh, engage it on the tractor, this will spin and take power right from the engine uh, into the rototiller, which will make the blades turn. Not all my machines use that. Some of them do. This is not, um, this is not a, a point. It just rotates with it. It is not holding the machine uh, to the tractor. It is just there for power. So there you go. Uh, for all you people who knew this already, apologize for the delay. Let's get to it. Rototilling, spreading chicken manure. <laughs> 